You're listening to the REI Clarity Podcast, the show that guides you from confusion to clarity and sets you on the path to financial freedom faster. Learn how to grow your portfolio the right way with your host, REI advisor and co-founder of Shine Insurance, Jeremy Goodrich. Hey there, and welcome to the REI Clarity Podcast. My name is Jeremy Goodrich. I am your host, and our episode today is going to be kind of a class in networking on how to network with other people and specifically how to grow a thoughtful and well-rounded network of service providers, of mentors, of other people that are doing the work that you're doing, how to find folks who have finances, how to find other types of people who are going to make your real estate journey grow more quickly make it more smooth and make sure that when you don't know what to do in a scenario, you at least know who to call. Our guest has done it all. She's been a wholesaler, flipper. She has investment properties both in the personal space and the commercial space. She's a realtor. She's written a book called Networking with Purpose, and she has a course, a master class on how to network to find private money lenders in specific. She will talk about all these things as well as breaking down her four-step process for growing your network so you can, like her, have access to the funds that you need when you need them. Our guest has raised over $16 million from private money lenders over the course of her real estate investing journey, and she explains to you how to do that for yourself as well. All right, without further ado, my interview with Amy Majori. So I wanted to start with, particularly with folks who have done so many different things. I wonder if you can talk about your strategy um, when it comes to invest, you know, the the real estate investing in particular, and uh, how your strategy started and how it's evolved. Sure, absolutely. It's so crazy because my background is corporate America. I did not have any experience in real estate when I started. Um, it's a very traditional. I went to school, got good grades, got a job. I don't even know how I got this job for Dell Computers in Austin, Texas. Um, the interview was a flop, in my opinion. So I met Dell. I was there for 14 years. And um, as I decided to pursue my passion in entrepreneurship, specifically real estate, it's crazy because. I was never looked at as a leader. Um, I was never a manager of people. So to look back at the $11 million business that I ran at one point in the team of over 30 is crazy. And the way I was able to do that was through strategic networking. And, um, you know, a lot of us are gifted with um, talents and characteristics and strengths that just help us rise to the, to the top in certain things. Um, and we all have weaknesses. So for me, a towering strength of mine is networking, not so much what I learned at Dell, but really the family I was born into. So I come from a very unique family dynamic that has allowed me to study the art of networking for 37 years. Yes, 37 years. I'm 42. <laughs> I started at age five. So <laughs> my mom and her two sisters married my dad and his two brothers. Yes, oh my Middle gosh. Eastern. Um, yeah, people are like, was that arranged or Middle Eastern? No, it wasn't arranged. They got married by choice. And so what happened was they all immigrated to the U.S. in the late 70s to East Lansing, Michigan, and bought homes within three miles of one another, and then had all of us kids. And so I was born into a networked family. And what I mean by that is I had to start learning at a very young age, and I was very shy, how to start managing multiple personalities, multiple relationships, because we were at each other's homes every single day. I say I have three moms and three dads. I'm one of seven children, even though my mom and dad only had me and my brother. So I've really practiced and studied the art of networking. And that is how I was able to leave corporate America and build my power team and raise millions of dollars with absolutely no experience. And as I got out there and started to network, I realized that 
a lot of people just didn't know how to do it. You know, networking is more than just, oh, I'm going to go to an event and chit chat or grab some drinks or hand out 500 business cards or try to build my list with the intention of trying to sell a product or a service. Sure, that may be a piece of it, but that's not the foundation. And that's not going to set you up for success depending on where you want to go. In my opinion, modern day networking is how do we get out there and genuinely get to know people? How do we serve others? How do we generate value? How do we create win-win situations, but all coming from a genuine, humble place? And that's going to come back to you tenfold. The law of reciprocity will find its way back to you if you get out there and just start figuring out how to help others. I love that. So I want to kind of unpack a lot of the things you just said there. So if we go back to when you were a kid, and you, when you were starting that, what you look back now and say, I started that networking, even with my family members, how, how did that look? Like, what's an example as you look back at being five or six and you're like, okay, I didn't realize that I was learning this skill, but I was totally learning a skill that I now use as an adult to network. That's a great question. I was very, very shy growing up. Um, actually, when I speak, I show a picture of me angry and I talk about my anger management journal. Yes, I actually had one. And I'll never forget the very first memory of one of my cousins who I grew up were basically like twins was seeing her come back. My very first memory is seeing her come back from a trip at the airport. And my brother is eight years older than me. So even though we grew up in the same house, you know, he was more like a father figure to me. We weren't like super tight growing up. And so I kind of had the only child syndrome up until age five. And so when I met my cousin who was my age and you know, my parents were forcing us to talk. I remember just like staring at her and not wanting to talk to her. And But we had to spend every single day together. And so, yeah, we would fight. We would pull hair. We would scream at each other. But with 13 people in one house, um, multiple days of the week, I naturally figured it out. Like I remember another time I used to, when I want, wanted to talk to my aunt, I would crawl up to her and I would tug on her skirt and then one day I came home and I was like, oh my God, mom, I'm so excited. And she was like, what happened? And I said, I wanted ice cream. And instead of um, tugging on my aunt's skirt, I dragged her to the freezer and pointed. <laughs> so it's like, they're just little things for me where when I look back, I'm like, oh, I, I was in the middle of chaos. Like that movie, mm. My Big Fat Greek Wedding, that's my family minus the Greek part. So it's just, <laughs> it was constant management of relationships. Well, I think that makes sense. And especially for someone who maybe doesn't just naturally having that have that outgoing sense, doesn't naturally have the ability to, I don't want to say manipulate because, but there's sort of like to articulate where you're coming from, what your needs are, and also turn around and be thoughtful and conscious of what the needs of the person you're communicating with are, right? Right. And I think that's very normal. Yeah, absolutely. And not and not knowing how to do that or not wanting to do that. Sure. I mean, when we first had a conversation about you coming on the show, I was like, oh my God, I hate networking. I am so anti-networking. And I do it. And but but what I think of as networking, and I think that's the point you're getting at, and I'm excited to learn more about, is what I think about it as networking is going to these events. And I mean, I just want to hide in the corner. I want to find the safest person that I know and just sit with them. And if there's alcohol, usually I'll have a couple too many beers because it's like you're like sure. nervous and you're like, okay, well, I need something. And it just doesn't really create the positive outcome that you're looking for. What about that description? Because I bet the way I just described it, a lot of people are like, yes, exactly. That is who I am too. What is wrong with that approach and what steps can someone take to maybe do a better job in maybe that physical situation or, or something different? Sure. Great question. And there's nothing wrong with it. You know, it's just, it's not right or wrong. It's just different. And as you described that, I pictured and imagined myself many times um, in those same scenarios. Now here's, here's the kicker. When I was in those scenarios, I was at a networking event that I had to go to. Um, it was something for my corporate job at Dell. Right. Even and, worse. You're like forced to be there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, you know, when I think about all of us as real estate professionals, I'm assuming that we are here because we want to be here. Nobody is forcing us to be an investor, a developer, a realtor, a mortgage broker, whatever. This is a path that we chose. 
And because we chose it, it's something hopefully that we enjoy doing. Now, even in my own business, like I will tell my students, I don't care. Like, let's say I'm teaching them a lesson on how to raise private money. And it, it's, I'm tying this into a networking event. I tell them, I don't care how many people that you have the ability to raise capital from. If you don't like that person, you're not connecting with them. You're not jiving. You don't have the same culture and vice versa. Like they want to like you too, or they're not going to invest with you. Then move on. You're not that desperate for money. So you want to surround yourself with like-minded people, people on the same mission. So as you do that, and it's actually going to have a snowball effect on you personally and professionally, but as you do that, you're naturally going to have fun at the networking events because you're with the people you want to spend time with. You have common goals and common values and common interests. And so because you're in an industry that you enjoy, um, those feelings should be minimal. And if they're not, then let us know. I have a cheat sheet that I'd created. I'd be more than happy to share it with you guys on the 10 networking questions that you can ask at any networking event if you're more of an introvert and you're not really sure how to open up the conversation. Okay, cool. And maybe we can maybe we can link that in the show notes. Um, and so, so you've really built this networking your way to like, uh, you know, $16 million in private money. So I, I understand networking. I get, and I think you make a great point there that in a lot of networking events, you know, half the people are there because they have to be because someone's forced them to go there. Sure. And when you go to most of these real estate events, it should not be anyone really who's forced to be there or certainly a small percentage of people are forced to be there. We are all entrepreneurs. We're all in this. And so if you can engage with people with that knowledge that they all do want to be there, then it really is a, a, an interesting and thoughtful way to do it. So for someone who wants to start networking and grow to a place where they have access to $16 million in private, sure. uh, private money, Walk us through a few steps of that. Like what's step one? So that's a great question. And I've been to so many events and I've, you know, discussed this with peers and mentors and coaches of mine, and everyone's got a different opinion. My belief is step one is who are you? Know your role. And what I mean by that is have an elevator pitch. Not now, not a traditional, you know, 60 second elevator pitch where you rattle off like 500 things that people can't remember, but 20 seconds. Who are you? What do you do? And why do I care to talk to you? And that's actually the very first template I give my students is here's your 20 second elevator pitch, literally delete my name, put your name in it and add your goals. Um, so it's just knowing like, why are, why are you really here? Like, are you trying to, if you're trying to grow business, that's okay. Well then, who are the people that you're trying to build a relationship with? Yeah. And as long as you know who you are and what you do, that's going to open up the conversation into figuring out, okay, I know this person now. Do I like them? And vice versa. I love that. So understand your why. I think in so many things we do, if we don't understand our why at a, you know, and that's studying yourself, there's lots of different ways that you can do this, but knowing, okay, why am I doing this? And if your answer is, well, to make a bunch of money, okay, but, but let's take it a little bit deeper. All right. Why else? Why do you want a bunch of money? What is going to a bunch of money going to do for your life? How is that going to change your life? What is the vision of your future and what does your journey look like? You know, knowing all those things, now that's a lot more than a 20 second pitch, obviously, but understanding that infrastructure underneath inside your sort of spirit and soul is super important to being able to walk into a room and share it with other people. That's what you're saying, yes. right? Yes. And it's crazy that you just used that why as an example, because that was me in 2012. My mm -hmm. why was I want to go make a bunch of money in real estate. And yeah. I don't, I, I didn't. There was nothing more to that. I didn't want to leave a legacy. I didn't want to build a future for my children. I didn't want to create my lifestyle by design. I just wanted to make a bunch of money. And so what happened was because there was no substance behind it, to your point, two months into my to a coaching and mentorship program that I had invested in, I freaked out. I let the element of fear get in the way, which is very normal for a lot of us. And for one full year, I did nothing. I lost my coaching and mentoring classes and my coaching calls. And I just kept working at a job that I really could not stand. My performance was starting to drop. And then finally, my uncle, one of my three dads, uh, passed away prematurely to cancer. Mm. I can finally talk about it seven years later without crying. It's okay. 
But that was my wake-up call. It was exactly a year later. He passed away from cancer, and I saw it happen right before my very eyes. And I snapped out of it. I was like, Amy, what are you doing? And then I built the substance behind my why. So it's it's so important. And I think every successful person has a story like that where, you know, your why cannot be just making money. You Agreed. know, it just it just doesn't work. And but you got to find it somehow. And it's unfortunate that that's how you had to find it. But a lot of people, it seems like that is, how, you know, some sort of tragedy or close to tragedy or realization of of life and its weirdness and, you know, right. form says to us, wow, there's so much more to this. That was a really good story. And, and I think that's really important for listeners to understand is if you're like, hey, I just want to make a bunch of money, you know, you may be able to do that at some surface level. But if you really want to take it to the, the next level and make it fulfilling, then understanding your why. So step one is is understanding your why. Now we you understand what you're doing it for. You have a passion for it. You have a drive. You can see where you're headed into the future. That gives you the capacity to be able to walk in a room and talk about it. Uh, what would step? T- I'm sort of forcing you into a stepped structure here. I That's don't know if okay. that works or not. But <laughs> I've got a method. It's all good. I, it's, you're actually leading me right down my fact method, my FACT uh, method. FACT. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and so then, then step two. Step two. What what would that be? So the elevator pitch that we just talked about, step one. So under my fact method, that's a part of building your foundation. So who are you? What do you do? Other things that go along with building your foundation is let's start marketing and start advertising it discreetly. And what I mean by that is social media. A lot of people are nervous about social media. You know, I've got students right now who are saying, I can't go update my social media sites to say that I'm a real estate investor. Like I've never even walked a property. Who cares? (laughs) Right. You've made the mindset shift that you are a real estate investor. You've invested in coaching and mentorship. You know who you are. You, you know your role. Yes, you are a real estate investor. It doesn't matter what level you're at. So if you go down the fact method after building your foundation, step two is taking action. Okay. Now, what I mean by taking action is, all right, you know who you are. Um, we've announced it to the world. So now it's time. It's time to start networking. It's time to start talking to people, start getting out there and developing relationships. And no, not just with friends and family members. This is actually really annoying. And one of my pet peeves, there are so many coaches out there who say, oh, you need to go raise private money. Just go talk to your friends and family members. And the common response is, no, I don't want to. I'm uncomfortable. They're not supportive. They don't have money. No, I'm actually going to encourage you to do the exact opposite. So when I talk about taking action, if you want to go target your friends and family, great. I didn't because I'm very stubborn. That's a whole nother story. (laughs) And so, um, you know, what you want to do is it's connecting with people now more than ever because of this twilight zone we're living in online. How Mm -hmm. do I strategically and respectfully connect with people on LinkedIn What do I say to them? Okay, I connect with someone on LinkedIn. Now they want to meet me for coffee. What do I take to this meeting? So it's basically your credibility pieces, creating your content. Here's your list of frequently asked questions. Here's your private money presentation. Here is your private money credibility packet. Here's your online portfolio. And here's your newsletter. And you guys, for those of you who are hearing this or watching, and you're thinking, oh my God, I don't have any of that stuff. Yes, you do. You have it, you just don't know that you have it. Or you haven't put it together. Exactly, just putting it together. This episode of REI Clarity is brought to you by Shine Insurance. Shine Insurance is the number one real estate specialist for investors in the Midwest. We work with real estate investors who have more than 10 units of single family, multifamily, and commercial real estate. At Shine, our process is simple, our policies are smart, and when you need us, we shine. My story today is really quick. It's just about a coverage and it's about what's called business personal property coverage. If you look on your policy, you've got building coverage. That's for the building itself. And then you have personal property or business personal property coverage. It's really important that you have this on your policy, but it's just a limited thing. It's really for stoves and fridges. 
basically. If you have annual tenants, they own all the stuff inside the property. That's not your stuff. You don't need to insure it. But your stove and your fridge pretty much is. Maybe a washer and dryer if you have it in the space. Now, if you have short-term rentals, you obviously own a lot more of the stuff in the space. So you want to make sure you have more coverage for business, personal property. My point is, think right now about your investment properties. Do they have anything inside of them that if you turned the building upside down and shook it, would fall out? If any of that stuff is owned by you, you should make sure you have business, personal property coverage coverage on your policy at the amount that it would cost to replace those things. All right. If you're an investor in the Midwest, really from South Carolina to Wisconsin, you have a portfolio larger than 10 units and you believe your insurance advisor is an important part of your team. Shine is definitely right for you. Take 10 minutes right now to go to shineinsurance.com and change the way you feel about insurance. So you're focusing on on driving in this first action step. You're using the example of of attracting private money and going out for that particular piece. As you teach folks to take that second action step, is it is is that a key first part of it? Is finding the money, or is this sort of one example of multiple different things that you're doing in this action step? Yeah, it's the latter of the two. It's just one example. So you're not really out there. And actually, when I talk about taking the action and connecting with people and networking, it doesn't even matter if they have money. You're connecting with real estate professionals and non-real estate professionals, letting them know who you are and what you're doing. So you're just building relationships right now. And um, I actually spoke to you soon earlier. And um, it's through not just LinkedIn, but Meetup. And I'll go back in a second. And, um, you know, various events, creating a list of the 20 most influential people in your life. I love that. People of influence, right? Not people with money, people of influence, because once you educate people of influence on who you are and what you're doing, now you've got 20 advocates on your team out there helping you raise money and sending you referrals. Yeah. And I think 20 people that you look like that you look up to in this world or in, in whatever worlds, right? If you make a list of 20 people that are, are somewhere in their journey further along than you. Yes, I think that's exactly. a great way to connect. Right. And it can even be somebody that's one touch away. So make it a list of people of influence in your inner circle and your outer circle. So let's say you have a friend who knows somebody that's influential. Okay. Then have your friend make an intro. Mm-hmm. That's got to be you know relevant. And it takes time, you guys. It doesn't happen overnight. And then step three is the C. It's it's the credibility pieces. It's the contracts. Like, okay, Amy, I've established these connections. I've got my credibility pieces in place. And I understand, like, if an investor tells me today, I want to invest 50 grand, well, here are the contracts that I'll provide you with. It's just being organized and having a system in place. And again, it doesn't matter if you're new or experienced. You got to have those systems. So after taking that action of starting to build your network, going out in a variety of ways, social media, you know, LinkedIn is a great way to find folks being thoughtful about, is like you know, LinkedIn. Sometimes people just like connect with you and then want to sell you something. Obviously, that's not a very good plan. You've got to be thoughtful in how you connect pe- with people, but begin to make those connections. And then your third step is that credibility. And, and that's a system and strategy. So when I think of credibility, I think like not being a liar. But I think you're saying there's more to that credibility. Can you expand on that? Yes. A little? Well, not being a liar is also one of them. Well, that's so. a, yeah, that's important. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to do everything with high ethics and morale, you guys, and high values. Um, but yeah, so for me, credibility is like, let's say you came to me and you're under step three to credit the credibility piece. Well, what's in it for me? What's in it for you? Um, What makes you an investor that I should want to invest with? Show me the pricing from your contractor. Show me how you analyze deals. Mm -hmm. Even if you haven't done deals before, it doesn't matter. Show the person you're talking to. Here are examples of projects my contractor has completed. If you don't have a contractor yet, you guys, it doesn't matter. Get out there and Go to Home Depot, give your contact info to five contractors. Yeah, yeah. Vet them over the phone and get a bid sheet from them. So it's like all of the pieces that make you an expert, whether you do or don't have experience. So it's, mm-hmm. it's your system, right? Yeah. So sometimes this idea of fake it till you make it, I want to unpack that a little bit because I think, what do you think of that phrase and, and how it applies to what you're saying? I say it all the time and I'm surprised that 
it hasn't come out yet. And again, that's another thing that people are like, I'm not all about fake it till you make it. Why? All I mean by fake it till you make it is be confident in what you're doing. I'm not saying lie. For example, I have a student who said, it's Thursday, Amy. You told me every Thursday I have to post a project update. Well, I don't have any projects. And I said, okay, great. Here's where you get creative and think outside the box. Go drive by a house that's being renovated, take a picture of the house, put it on social media, and just say, coming soon, stay tuned for updates. Yeah. You're not saying it's your project. It's a house that's being renovated, and you're going to keep your audience updated on the renovation. Yeah, I think you're building when you're building that that foundation. You're building. You're, you're st- you should be studying. You should be practicing. You should be analyzing deals. You should be doing all that kind of stuff and building your network through that. And at some point, you do have to like throw it out there. Say what you're going to be able to do. Try and connect with the money. And um, it it does feel a little bit. You know, when I first started working in the real estate insurance world and and being like, okay, I want to insure like apartments and big things. You know, there was some point where I had to be like, I would love to do this. And in my back of my mind, I'm like, I have no idea where I'm going to go. And, you know, some of the solutions and then you go and figure out those solutions. And then inherently that teaches you the next step and you get better and you get better and you start to know more of the answers. I mean, um, I think that's true in all elements. So there's a little bit of fake it till you make it in everything that you learn. And you just have to be thoughtful about that. That's when you hang up with whoever you're talking to and you pick up the phone and call your coach. Okay, I've come across the scenario. Now what do I do? That's exactly what I did for one full year. Okay, now what? Now what? Now what? This person called me. They're a motivated seller. I don't know what to say. It's like you do know what to do because you have a team. Your team is your coach, your mentor, your realtor, your contractor. You've built the people around you and particularly your, your mentors, your coach and mentor. But also, yeah, I mean, I have a buddy who's a contractor who I call him every time I have questions about whatever. Sometimes he'll do the work with me. Sometimes I just need to bounce off to him, him <laughs> you know, some idea. And that's, right. that's a relationship that uh, works really well. So step three is building the credibility and really building the strategies and systems underneath your business. So f- what's in the FACT, the fact system, we've only got one more. Uh, Amy, what are, what's, what's the T? So step four is the transactions, you guys. So you start taking care of steps one, two, and three. The transactions, the commitments from your private money lenders, they're going to start to roll in. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the great thing. If you've taken the time to set your foundation, create your credibility pieces, take action, consistency is key. Every single week, at least one day a week, you want to hone in on networking. How many private money lenders am I going to connect with on Thursday, for example? How many realtors? How many general contractors? I did this every single Thursday actually for 18 months. So, but once you do that and the the transactions, the private money starts to come in, then it's gonna again be like a snowball effect. And not only are more and more investors going to invest and that's gonna happen because you're a lot more confident and now you're, you're starting to see the results of your hard work, right? But they're gonna continue to reinvest and reinvest and reinvest. And then not only will you be able to fund your deals through private money and hard money, But eventually the hard money will fizzle away if you want it to. I don't. I still use hard money. I love it. And then you can just use private money and save on some additional fees if you want. So then you have, I mean, I think you hear that story over and over again. Once you get two or three, four transactions, assuming you have systems in place, you've shown your investors that you know what you're doing. You've shown them that you're an honest person and you're going to make this work for them. And you, you know, all those things, suddenly the money just starts flowing because there's all these people who want to be involved in the work you're doing. And so that makes total sense. And the only thing I'll add, because there have been a lot of questions lately um, that I've received is in an effort not to overwhelm you with all these credibility pieces, if for you, your only credibility piece is your deal analyzer, your cost benefit analysis, whatever Excel spreadsheet you use to calculate, is this a profitable deal or not? That's great. That's actually probably one of the most important things is being able to sit down with your private money lender and say, hey, look at my numbers. I've taken into account every single cost variable. What matters at the end of the day is not your experience. It's the deal. As long as you have a deal and you built your team of experts, you'll have no problem raising private money. 
I think that makes total sense. I would add, if you show them the, the numbers like you just described, and then tell them a little bit about your boots on the ground analysis, where, you know, I'm, I've driven this neighborhood, I've talked to neighbors, here's what they say about this property and the space it's in. I've looked at the businesses that are around this, and I can see their longevity. If you show an investor, hey, not only am I good at the numbers and I can see a successful property, but I also am able to look at the heart of the space and understand what's going on there as well. Well, I think I the, that. that's going to get things going really, really well. Okay. So fact is foundation first and then action starting to go out there and make connections and do all the things you need to do. And then credibility starting to show that you have systems and strategies in place to be able to do this work. And finally take action with transactions or wait, action was the other one. Sorry. Transactions is the T get those deals done and uh, start making the snowball work from there. Yeah. Did we get it there? Perfect. Thank I you. Did, yeah. So you have a master class that you are doing really, really soon. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how it adds on to this work? Yeah, absolutely. I love coaching and mentoring. I am still an active real estate investor myself, as is my husband. That's how we met. And um, actually what happened was I've, I've been a coach since 2014, coaching students all over the country and everything they need to know from A to Z. And then in January, 2019, I found out I was pregnant, which was great. I was super excited. My daughter is now 11 months old, but I didn't want to continue keynote speaking. I didn't want to continue traveling all over the country, you know, coaching. I wanted to be a soccer mom. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to take, I'm going to take a topic that I know so many people struggle with which is raising private money. And I'm just going to hone in on that one topic. So that's actually all I teach. Yeah. And um, I've been doing live workshops over the last couple of years. And now I'm just bringing everything online. And um, I've got some active classes going right now. And I'm going to be launching a free webinar, a free masterclass webinar on August 18th, um, where I take whoever would like to join, take them through a lot more detail of, you know, not only how I raised 16 million over four years, but how I was able to raise 388,000 on my very first deal in just 21 days with no experience. Wow. Like I didn't know what I was doing and I raised <laughs> 388,000. It's, you know, learning how to raise private money for um, fast tracking your path to retirement. You know, why wait 10 years to retire when you can go raise private money and buy rental properties tomorrow? I love that. And that's what you did just there. Like you, you know, even inside of your real estate journey because of having a baby and, and knowing, Hey, here's, here's the life I want. You're creating that life for yourself. And that's such a neat thing you can do in real estate that you just can't do in very many other types of financial scenarios. A hundred percent. I just had a student sign up for one of my classes and it's funny cause he's a mortgage broker. And I was like, oh, because I just assumed he flipped houses or wholesaled because you can raise private money for transactional funding, too, if you wholesale. And uh -huh. um, he was like, oh, no, I don't I don't want to do any of that stuff. He goes, he goes like you, I'm the networker. He goes, I'm the middleman. I have investors who come to me for money, but they need the gap funding and they can't raise it. And he goes, yeah. so I want to learn how to raise private money so I can generate multiple streams of income and just collect referral fees. And oh, like, that's oh, so God. smart. On, exactly. Yeah. And you're going to get so many from, from a mortgage lender perspective, you're going to get so many more deals on the mortgage lending side because investors know that you can add more than just the, the money, you know, the money from the lending. You've got all this right. other value that you bring. That's really smart. Yeah. And now he's collecting one point. And it's funny because I've been doing that for years and I forgot to teach it. But now uh -huh. he's collecting one point on every single referral that goes out. He learns how to raise the money. He raises it. And then he introduces his investor clients to his private money lenders and takes a referral fee. One point every single time they lend to his investor client. And so worth it for everyone involved. I mean, that's, I love it when you can make money and you're, you're serving every, like everybody's cool with it. Cause you connected people with the money and folks with the investments and everything else. So that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, that alone is, can, it, it's just amazing. I remember when I was actually putting a lot of, I don't really like broker deals anymore. Um, I just, mm -hmm. I don't care to do that anymore. But when I was still excited about it and I had more money coming in than I needed at the time, I remember it was like 2016, I think maybe 2015. I, I could show you multiple receipts where I would get check after check after check every month for anywhere from eight to $10,000 and just passive income through referral fees. Yeah. Like that's, that's more than I made at Dell. I was making five grand a month at Dell <laughs> for 14 years. 
That's so great. I, I mean, that's a, it's such a neat piece of this work. It's just the connecting people. And it comes back to what you were talking about with net- networking. Now you're making money off of essentially networking, you know, and Absolutely. doing that work in the middle. Super cool. All right. Well, uh, before we go, any last thoughts, any last pieces of advice for, for listeners to the show? Oh, man. Advice like you guys, just whatever it is that you want to do, you can do it. It goes back to what you were talking about earlier, like your why. If you don't have a why, and if that why doesn't make you emotional, I'm going to challenge you to make sure you dig deep and you try to find a why that makes you emotional then I would say that's your step one because that's going to be your motivating driving force to get out there and conquer and work on every single thing that you do. And a lot of you have probably already experienced, and if not, you're going to a lot of negativity, a lot of um, naysayers out there who think what you're doing is crazy or you're never going to be successful or, oh my God, how are you going to go flip multiple homes or from friends and family members, keep your head down, stay focused, keep the end in mind and get out there and connect yourself with people who are doing exactly what you're doing. And then they're going to bring you up and you can start to create accountability groups out of that. I love that so much. And the accountability groups is a great thing to do. It's a simple thing you can do with friends on uh, create a Facebook group or whatever, or obviously connect with you, Amy, and be a part of that kind of stuff. Okay. I'm going to ask you the last question I ask on, on every episode. And it's a really simple one. Uh, Amy, who would you love to see on REI Clarity in the future? Like, who would you love to have for us to have on as a guest? Oh, wow. That is a phenomenal question. Uh, Oh, man. Specific names don't come. Do you want a specific name or like an industry? I mean, maybe like an answer to a question. A specific name is great if you have it. Obviously, it's just a way of I'm trying to network on the show right now, right? (laughs) It's like, hey, who do you know that I don't know that would be great to share with listeners? Um, But also like maybe someone who answers a question like the episode before this one was all about 1031 exchanges. So like very specific questions that we can answer. So I have the actually perfect person. Okay. Her name is LaDonna Smith. And I can connect you offline if you'd like. She actually started out as one of my very first real estate coaches and mentors. She's a powerhouse in the industry, many, many strengths. And she actually just came out with a new training where she helps uh, real estate investors, specifically landlords, deal with eviction. It's a, oh, it's a interesting. Yeah, it's an area she's very well versed in. Um, She's got a lot of experience. And so she's come up with a streamlined process to um, mitigate that and just really help landlords have some peace of mind when it comes to the evictions process. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, LaDonna, if you're listening, I will reach out to you soon. And Amy, I'll I'll absolutely ask for that connection. Attempting to network is what I'm doing there. (laughs) So if folks want to connect with you, Amy, if they want to do this masterclass or find ways to private money or, you know, read your books or whatever, how can they do so? Yeah, sure. Thanks for asking. So you can always check out my website, which is raisingcapitalforyourbusiness.com. Or I manage my own social media and I check it every day. So connect with me on LinkedIn and or on Instagram. You can private message me, whatever, and I will respond. Awesome. Well, Amy, it's been great. I feel like whenever things calm down and I I go out to a networking meeting, I'll be more prepared than I was before. And also just doing it online and connecting like this. So I really appreciate you being willing to share your knowledge and your time with our listeners. And uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It was great chatting with you. Special thanks to Amy Majori for taking the time to share her insights with us. I am feeling inspired, even though maybe I don't really want to. And in COVID times, I'm certainly not going to go out to a networking meeting at this very moment, but to reach out to folks who I know in the community, who I am going to set up meetings with to expand my own network and my own capacity to do the work that we are doing here. So who do you know that needs to hear this episode, who needs to grow their network, who maybe needs to come out of the corner of that networking meeting and have a way to talk about the things that they're doing. Maybe needs to uh, focus their systems a little bit more so they can pitch to private money lenders a little better. 
please grab your phone and send them this episode. Let's help everyone level up. All right. We do read every single review. If you have your phone in your hand right now, while you are walking your dog, thinking about what the next podcast is that you're going to listen to, please consider taking a quick moment, going over to the rating and reviews section, giving us a five star review and leaving us a review of some kind, you know, that tells us what you like and what you want to hear next. And always, please do feel free to join us at the REI Clarity Facebook group. It is the place to get clarity, make connections, and implement the systems and strategies that we talk about here. Just search REI Clarity on Facebook and look for that gold logo. We will see you inside. All right, until the next time, here's to clarity that leads to financial freedom faster. 